Last screencast, we covered receiving input from the built-in Joypad Navigator that comes with the SDK. Now we'll create a custom controller to use during gameplay. So the first, well since actually the last screencast, I've created a new UI view controller called Game View Controller. Again, it implements the JP Device Delegate and JP Manager Delegate protocols. And there's not much to it right now. I just copy these from uh, our menu view controller. The, they are the joypad manager delegate methods. Uh, and the game view controller I just in the zip file I just wrote I am a game so that we know when we're there. Alright so in our old menu view controller here last time when we hit select on our joypad navigator, we just log something out. So you hit select. Now let's actually start gameplay when that happens. I mean, you know, hypothetical start gameplay. So we will import game view controller. I should have written this too because this is nothing but boilerplate. Play. Okay, sorry about that. So when we write JP, or I mean, when we hit select on the navigator, we're gonna launch, or we're gonna pop game view controller on top of menu view controller. So let's go into game view controller now. And well, what do we need to do here? When view, when we get this view did appear, we need to tell JP Manager that we're now in gameplay. So we go shared joypad manager. Uh, set game state KGP game state gameplay and what this will do is this will make sure that the SDK knows that we can't search for joypad no matter what uh, and the reason is it could have network implications when you actually or network performance implications if you leave the search for joypad running during gameplay so if you background in gameplay and come out it's not going to search for joypad unless you automatically put up a pause screen which we recommend you do. Okay, let's do that. And let's also create a custom image, I mean a custom controller for Game Boy. Let's use a class method here to do it. If you want to see the API calls that you use to create a custom layout, uh, you just type add and do whatever code complete is, and you know you have all these API calls here. So we're going to create something that has a left button, a right button. You know, like a lot of platformers on iOS, they have a left button, a right button, and then maybe a B and an A. So we're going to use this add button with frame image name API call. We're going to use it a lot. Uh, first button will be at 0, 0, width of 100, and height of 320. Image name, we'll fill that in in a second. So that'll be L button, R button, B button, A button. This will be at width of 100. This will be at width of 280. And this will be at 380. Now, as for the images, let's use custom images. Uh, we'll use background, jump, left, lightning, right 
copy those into the folder and each one of these is a retina image you should always use retina images in the SDK so let's see left HD right HD B will make jump HD and A lightning. Now we're almost ready to test it, but we need to do one more thing. We need to let JP Manager know about each one of these images. And the reason that we do is because when a connection initiates between Joypad and the SDK, all the images that could be used during the lifetime of the connection get transferred across the wire and cached on the Joypad controller side. And the reason we do this is because we need layout switches to be very fast once gameplay has started. So let's go into our initial setup in App Delegate. And we'll add all those image names to a manager property called image names. And with objects, jump HD. Left HD oh, I forgot to set the controller background, didn't I? Set the background image name to controller eg hd. So, and view did appear. Set the controller layout to self class custom layout. And that should do it. Let's try it out. If I open Joypad on my phone, these two will sync up. I get the navigator. Hit select on the navigator. I see I am in I'm a game. I am a game. And we see the custom images here. Okay, so, so as you can see, these images they take up the whole the whole width of the phone and Sometimes during development, it's it's nice to see what the touch frames actually look like while you're while you're getting your controller laid out correctly. So let me just show you a quick debug tool uh, back in our debug frames to yes, and when you do that, now as you can see, each component has. A debug frame associated with it so we can see where the touch frames actually are and it's nice especially if you're using resizable analog sticks um, because you can set the the radius of the analog stick like the maximum radius and also the, the total touch frame like where touches will be interpreted as for the analog stick uh, maybe I'll show you that in a later screencast actually okay so Let's turn this back off because it makes it look kind of ugly. And then we'll wire up these buttons. In order to do this, we're going to need... Let's, let's do this. We're going to need to do the same thing that we did in the in the menu view controller and that is we want to make sure that managers delegate is self and all devices all device delegates are also self and if you have like uh, if you have a bunch of view controllers, you end up typing this quite a bit, 
and it's kind of annoying. So there's a helper method in JPUtils called jpUpdateDelegates. And when you use that, you can get rid of all this. Okay, and now let's wire up the joypad device button up. We would really want to implement button up and button down to see when the, the button states change, but just for the sake of time, let's just do button up and we'll switch on button. Um, case. L. Let's just log something out. L. L R A B. Okay, let's build and run and try it out. Get our navigator. See we're in a game. Uh, if I bring up the console here, A B R L. Okay, and finally, one last touch. The navigator itself can be skinned to match your game. So let's drag that in. Custom background for it. And back in menu view controller. We'll say do update delegates here. Clean this up. And we can say manager.controller layout equals JP controller layout. Oh, you know what? I need to build one up. We can start with the navigation layout class helper and we can say layout.background I don't know why the dot property doesn't work there but I think it's Xcode's autocomplete anyway set background image name to what do I want? nav bg hd and then in app delegate we can't forget to let JP Manager know about this. We say nav bg h. Now we have a custom background image on our navigator.